from the humble roots of their Italian neighborhood in Cleveland, Ohio, directors Anthony and Joe Russo have risen to the peak of the Hollywood film industry. The box office success of their latest full-length feature, Captain America Civil War, shows that after a decade and a half in film and television, the Russo Brothers brand is as hot as ever. Sons of Basil and Patricia Russo, the brothers trace their family roots to the Abruzzo region of Italy, as well as small villages along the northern coast of Sicily. With their sisters Gabriella and Angela, the Russos are a close-knit family that remains very active throughout the Italian-American community. Their father currently serves as national president of the Italian Sons and Daughters of America. The family often takes time to visit Italy for tours of ancestral towns, weddings in Venice, or extended family vacations. After graduating from Benedictine High School, the Russo brothers' interest in filmmaking began in earnest. Anthony attended the Graduate Film School of Columbia University, and Joe received his master's in theater from Ohio's Case Western Reserve University. In 1997, the brothers collaborated on their first indie film, Pieces. The cast and crew consisted of family and close friends, with production taking place at their uncle's office. Every night after filming, the crew would gather together for a family dinner prepared by mom Patricia and sisters Gabriella and Angela. Some 30 members of the Russo family took to the road and promoted the film at festivals in New York, London, and Los Angeles. The big break came during the Slam Dance Film Festival in Park City, Utah, where pieces attracted the attention of world-renowned filmmaker Steven Soderbergh, who offered to produce the Russo brothers' next film, Welcome to Collinwood. First screened in 2002, Welcome to Collinwood landed a spot in the director's Fortnite category at the Cannes Film Festival. The Russos were on their way. Filmmaking took a back seat to television while Joe and Anthony produced and directed Emmy Award winning work for Arrested Development, Community, Happy Endings and Agent Carter. It was their sophisticated brand of comedy and deft action scenes that appealed to Marvel Studios president Kevin Feige. The Russo brothers were chosen to co-direct the Winter Soldier installment of the Captain America movie franchise. Opening to critical acclaim in 2014, the film grossed over $715 million at the box office. Due to their success, Marvel kept the Russo brothers on board to direct the follow-up, Captain America Civil War, the highest grossing film of 2016. Anthony and Joe Russo are currently filming the next two installments of the Marvel Avenger series, projected to be the highest grossing films worldwide in the two years of their release. Recognizing seismic shifts in the global film industry, the brothers just announced the launch of a $350 million film production company based in the U.S. and China, staking out their place on the ground floor of a new era. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Anthony and Joe Russo as they accept the National Italian American Foundation Jack Valenti Institute Award. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the recipients of the 2016 NIAF Jack Valenti Institute Award, Joe and Anthony Russo. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we're still starstruck that uh, Franco Harris is here. Uh, we, he, he was an idol of ours growing up. Uh, we used to pretend to be him in the backyard when we were playing football. And for two guys from Cleveland to say that about a Pittsburgh Steeler, you know he was a special player. We are uh, really humbled by this award tonight because our heritage has always been such an important thing to us. We feel very blessed to have had a classic Italian-American upbringing, immigrant grandparents and great-grandparents who spent their lives in steel mills and sweatshops. They worked so hard 
Their calluses made their hands feel like catcher's mitts, and decades of booming machinery took their hearing. They had left their homes, crossed an ocean, and worked like this because they wanted a better life for their family, for their children. In our early years, we lived on East 127th Street in Cleveland, upstairs from our Nana, who spoke very little English. The smell of sauce permeating the walls of our duplex. A good day was when we snuck downstairs and Nana had made a fresh batch of biscotti, and we'd eat them till we were sick. <laughs> Sunday dinners, holidays with 60 Russos running around, East Side Russos, West Side Russos, Gallipolis, Kankasis, lodge picnics with all the other descendants of a tiny Sicilian town who had come to Cleveland. We grew up with two amazing and inspiring sisters who both served as our conscience and our best friends. And two of the most incredible parents you could hope for, parents who alternately showered us with love and affection and hammered discipline and the value of hard work into us. We were true film geeks growing up, watching movies on a Betamax player that our dad bought in the early 80s, gorging ourselves on Scorsese, De Niro, Coppola, De Palma. We would watch The Godfather every Christmas, and the movie Mean Streets changed our lives. But on the east side of Cleveland, actual filmmaking seemed as accessible to us as going to the moon, until we saw a little action movie called El Mariachi. It was made by a filmmaker named Robert Rodriguez, who wrote a book about how he made it for $7,000. Now here was a movie that we loved, that we could go see on the big screen in our favorite movie theater, and it was made for $7,000. Uh, well, that put a new idea into our heads. We began reading every book we could find on how to make movies. We sought out the one guy in Cleveland who knew how to operate a film camera. <laughs> we, uh, we wrote a script and then started to figure out how we could make it on, on a, as small a budget as possible. Uh, we would shoot for a month, all night, every night, in our uncle's hair salon. <laughs> our mom and sister, Gabriella, would bring pasta and salad around midnight for the crew. Our other sister, Angela, would act in a scene with some of her friends. And most of the other roles in the film would be filled by uncles, aunts, cousins, friends, some of whom are here tonight with us. We had so many relatives in the movie that we specified their relation to us in the credits where their name appeared. <laughs> As we developed our plan, we began to suspect that Mr. Rodriguez had maybe exaggerated a bit because try as we might, we could not get the budget any lower than many, many times $7,000. For two young 20-somethings with one credit card between them, this was getting complicated. Uh, for all the powerful things you can take away from the Italian-American experience, this could be the most important. In your times of greatest need, your family is there for you. Even though the rest of the world may doubt or dismiss you, your family has faith. At the time we decided to make our movie, Joe was pursuing a master's degree in acting. Our dad had warned him before he went down that path that he needed to be okay with living an underemployed life. <laughs> Apparently Joe was okay with that even though our father seemed pretty uneasy with it. I, on the other hand, was in my first year of law school and I decided I needed to drop out in order to, to commit to our movie. This was a bitter blow to our father it meant that I would be essentially walking away from the family business, a law firm that our dad had worked so hard to build, to follow the same underemployed road as my brother. <laughs> Even though I was living at home at the time, our father was so upset by my decision that for months we barely spoke, aside from the occasional grunt as we passed each other in the kitchen every morning. As Joe and I struggled to get our movie off the ground, we approached every person of means we had any connection to whatsoever and we pitched them our vision for the movie over and over, and we were shot down repeatedly by everybody. But over the long, hard road of trying, pleading, fighting to keep our dream alive, somebody had been watching us, watching our efforts. Someone who said that he was moved by our passion and excitement and dedication, and even though it was a serious sacrifice for this person, he dug into his pension and at the 11th hour saved our film. This person, of course, with our father. Who...
who, who may have been under some serious coercion from our mother. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, instead of investing in stocks or real estate or saving for retirement, our parents bet their lives on their children. They began pouring every hard-earned penny they had saved into helping us work toward our dream. Our sense of being Italian-American is very much grounded in our experience of love, our, our experience and love of our family. And that is most specifically what we want to pay forward, what we want to try to honor. Tonight we are here standing on the shoulders of our parents, of their parents. We are standing on the shoulders of our wonderful wives, Anna and Alicia, and our children whose lives are continuously unsettled by the long hours, the demands, the gypsy lifestyle that is filmmaking. We are here because of our family, and Joe and I accept this honor on their behalf, so thank you. We're, uh, we want to introduce our father, uh, Basil. Come on out, Ted. Uh, we still haven't paid him back, so we're going to pass around a hat, <laughs> if that's okay. Uh, we also uh, want to recognize Sebastian Stan, who is here tonight. He plays the Winter Soldier in Captain America Winter Soldier, Captain America Civil War, and the upcoming uh, Avengers films. He's here supporting NEF tonight. Uh, much, much love and respect to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, we're going to finish uh, with a quick little story. When I was 23 years old, I sat in the same audience, newly married with my uh, beautiful wife, Alicia, watching Nick Cage give a speech at the same podium in acceptance of the same NEF honor. As mentioned, my brother and I were two kids from Cleveland, zero connection to the film business, couldn't have been further from it. All we had to our names was some moxie, and uh, the negative for our first film that we had shot that summer, it was sitting in the refrigerator in a garage waiting to be developed. Uh, after dinner, my wife and I went out for a moonlit walk on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. At the top of the stairs, like an omen, stood Nicolas Cage sharing a cigar with his brother. After some encouragement from my wife, I went up and introduced myself to him. I said, Mr. Cage, my name is Joe Russo. Uh, my brother and I are aspiring filmmakers, and we just shot our first movie. And then I just stood there, looking at him. <laughs> I was hoping for some movie fairy dust to sprinkle on me. I was hoping he'd look at me and say, I would love to star in your next film. And then, boom, that'd be it. We could give our dad back his pension, and we'd be off to the races. But he didn't say that. Instead. He stuck out his hand, he smiled, he exhaled some cigar smoke, and he said, good luck, kid. <laughs> I stood there for an awkward beat. I realized that the conversation was over. Uh, I nodded, I walked back down the steps to my wife, and we sat there staring up at the stars. And I had an epiphany in that moment. I thought, I realized that this is where it starts, that this was just the beginning that nobody was going to give it to us and it was going to take every drop of our, our uh, blood in our bodies to, to achieve this dream that we had set out on. So uh, 22 years later, my brother and I feel it's only right that, like Mr. Cage did for us, if any aspiring filmmakers are in the audience tonight and uh, you want to start your journey uh, this evening, we will be at the top of the steps of the Lincoln Memorial ready to shake your hand. And Wish you on your way with a brief, but very encouraging good luck, kid. So thank you. Don't leave me up here alone. Come here. The truth of the matter is that they're going to do much, much more for young aspiring filmmakers uh, than they just stated. Our family is very... Um, excited to announce uh, that our sons will be creating what will be known as the Russo Brothers Italian American Film Forum. It will be the first <laughs> it will be the first program of its kind in the country. Every year seven uh, aspiring young filmmakers will receive 
$7,500 grants uh, to uh, be used to tell the story of the Italian-American experience in the most creative and inspiring way that they can imagine. The, the, goal, the goal of the Film Forum is to preserve our Italian-American legacy for future generations to know and appreciate. In addition uh, to providing the Film Forum with all the technical and creative support it requires through their film production company, uh, my sons and Marvel Studios collectively have made a $50,000 gift to cover the startup costs of initiating the program. It's our hope that these yearly grants will also serve to spawn a new generation of great young Italian-American filmmakers. This program came about because of two, uh, because two major Italian-American organizations, the National Italian-American Foundation and the Italian Sons and Daughters of America, understood the importance of working together to pursue our common goals. It's our hope uh, that this example will inspire other major Italian-American organizations to join with us as affiliates under NIAF's umbrella so we can begin to speak to our country with one loud, united voice. We will now show you a short video that will explain in more detail how the Russo Brothers uh, Italian-American Film Forum uh, will benefit our community. Inspired by the incredible support they received in their careers from their wonderful family and the Italian-American community, Hollywood directors Anthony and Joe Russo, along with the Italian Sons and Daughters of America and the National Italian American Foundation, have partnered to create the Russo Brothers Italian American Film Forum. This exciting program will offer grants, guidance, training, and internships to aspiring filmmakers across the country to create films that depict and explore the Italian American experience for the understanding of future generations. This initiative will empower young creative artists to continue the quest to tell our story to the world around us. Where are you from? Queens. Brooklyn. The National Italian American Foundation. Leadership in the arts. <laughs> 